Hey, it's Mick. Let's talk Spider-Verse. Yep, it's here. The perfect Spider-Man movie. Uh, okay, not perfect, but I mean, all things considered, pretty freaking close. It certainly gets Spider-Man better than the MCU movies. To be clear, I don't hate the MCU Spidey. I get what they're going for. But the most recent PS4 game and this movie are the first time in a long time that I have been genuinely excited about the wall crawler. And it seems I'm not the only one. The spider Sona trend has practically taken over Twitter, DeviantArt, Tumblr, everywhere. And it's cool to see the reach this movie's had and to see what creativity it's spawned. And I wanted to throw my hat into the ring. I first thought about basing this Spidey on the abilities of the Wolf Spider, which is not a bad idea, maybe even combine aspects of Spider-Man and Kraven. <laughs> well, not quite what I'm talking about, but you're on the right track. But after some thought, I realized that if I did that, this spider Sona would be deprived of one of Spidey's most iconic traits, web-slinging. Yeah, turns out wolf spiders can't spin webs like other spiders. Though, to be fair, for their environments, they don't really need to. True, it could be neat to try and create a spider Sona with that limitation, but I don't know, I'm not really feeling that idea. So, I went to a familiar place for inspiration. Mythology. A subject I find endlessly fascinating and curiously inspiring. One thing I definitely want to incorporate into my Spidey is a mythical influence to separate it from the other radioactive-powered spider sonas. Which, to be fair, the main universe Spider-Man's powers are linked to a mystical spider totem, so I'm not too far off. Yeah, they never really talk about that in the movies. I know for some people who aren't that well-versed in spider lore, that may sound like a bad idea, but seriously, just read Spider-Man Coming Home, it's actually a lot better than it sounds. Anyway, back to mythology. There's plenty of figures in mythology from around the world that are connected in some way, shape, form, or fashion to spiders, like Arachne from Greek mythology, who, fun fact, actually made an appearance in the Spider-Man musical, Anansi from African mythology, again, fun fact, also made an appearance in the Spider-Verse comic, and the Jorogumo from Japan. I don't know if she's ever made an appearance in Spider-Man comics. Or any comics, for that matter. However, my muse for this challenge comes from Celtic mythology. She is Ariantad, the Celtic goddess of fate and time. And wouldn't you know it, in addition to being associated with owls, she's also associated with spiders. Yeah, the story around her is... well, weird to say the least, but it's mythology. It's just as weird as comics are sometimes. And they are always saying comics are modern mythology, so, you know. Depending on how you look at the story, she's either someone who tried so hard to prevent some nasty things from happening to her son only for them to happen anyway, or she's the worst mother ever. It's a tragic story either way. But the fact that she's tied to fate does give me the idea that maybe she's aware of some great catastrophe approaching in the near future, and thus is in need of a champion to help prevent it. So. There's the backstory down, let's get on to the actual suit itself. Well, being as this is a magical Spider-Man, I figure I'd better at least have a look at a magical suit, specifically the Asgardian spider suit from the story arc Fear itself. I also thought that maybe some of the angular shapes in the new 2099 suit might give me some ideas how to incorporate some Celtic symbols into the costume. That didn't really pan out, but that's why I had it there for reference. I also had the idea to give this spider sona a long hood to try and make it feel a little more mystic and mysterious. So, uh, for reference, I pulled up Miles Morales in his hoodie from the movie, and a picture of Arachnite. What? You don't know who Arachnite is? <sighs> okay, well, during a comic event called Infinity Warps, the entire Marvel Universe got folded in half. But this isn't like the Infinity War movie. Rather than removing half of the lives in the galaxy, two or more characters got merged together, creating some crazy combinations like the Iron Hammer, Green Widow, and Weapon Hex. Arachnite is Spider-Man fused with Moon Knight, which is an odd combination to say the least, but at the same time, they did put Peter Parker back in the classroom as a high school science teacher. So, maybe I should check that out. Anyway, with all my pieces in place, I started experimenting. Normally I do a few versions of a design and combine what I think are the best aspects of each one into a final version. But for this challenge, I was happy with the second design I came up with. 
I like the idea of a long hooded cloak. Again, trying to make this Spider-Man feel more mystical and mysterious, while keeping the rest of the design relatively classic. Obviously, I used a Celtic spider symbol as a reference for this one. I think I changed it slightly for the final version, but this was just enough for me to get the idea down for now. But with the design out of the way, let's talk colors. Ariantod's name translates to Silver Wheel, and wouldn't you know it, there's a European spider species called the Silver Orb Weaver. Ooh, on that note, there's an idea for a name. The Silver Spider. Hey, we have the Scarlet Spider, why not give some love to the other colors? Yeah, speaking of which, back to the Orb Weaver. The colors of the Silver Orb Weaver are silver, or white, obviously, and black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow, black and... Sorry. So yeah, I decided to incorporate those, and also I added a little bit of blue to give him more of a ethereal feel. Oddly enough, the thing I had the most trouble with was settling on the color of the coat itself. I went through dark greens, reds, purples, even straight black. But in the end, I figured if I'm gonna call this character the Silver Spider, I guess it would make sense for him to be pretty bright. So, in the end, I decided to make it a very light, almost white, blue color. And it does kind of make him feel a little more mystical, almost like a ghost. Come to think of it, ghosts can be a symbol of fate, which kind of tying back into the theme. And yeah, I could have just left it there. I mean, I designed the character, that's all I really needed to do. But after watching someone else's Spider-Sona video, I got inspired. I wanted to go beyond just designing a cool costume. I wanted to make a comic book cover. But what exactly to do for said cover? Well, I grabbed a bunch of reference from other Spidey covers, and maybe it's just a coincidence, because I wasn't intentionally thinking about this at the time, but something about him being in the same frame as a clock felt right. Which, hey, his patron is the Celtic goddess of fate and time. But not just any old clock will do. No, no. We need something dramatic. We need a clock tower. So I did some quick googling off screen and found out that New York City has many clock towers. One of which is the Jefferson Market Clock Tower in Greenwich Village, which Greenwich Village is the location of the Sanctum Sanctorum of Doctor Strange. That's a cool, unintentional coincidence. I originally wanted to do something from the top down, a bird's eye view, as I felt that it looked more dramatic. But the more I thought about it, that may obscure most of the suit. And if I'm treating this like a comic cover with this character's first appearance, I want to make sure that the audience knows what he looks like. So I reworked a pose from one of the other thumbnails I made earlier, and began building. I suppose while all that's going on in the background, maybe I can take this opportunity to dig deeper into this character's story. I mean, so far, I've only established that he works for this goddess of fate trying to prevent a great catastrophe. I mean, solid enough motivation, but what else is going on? What's his real name? How old is he? Where is he from? When is he from? Why is he from? Hmm. Well, I know a lot of these spider sonas are just versions of the artist with spider powers, but... I don't know if I want to do the same thing. I'm not sure I want to go down that route. Let's see. If he works with a goddess of fate, maybe upon their initial meeting, maybe he got mad at her for allowing certain things to happen in his life, like the death of his Uncle Ben. Oh, I use quotation marks around the Uncle Ben in this instance, because as far as the story is concerned, it doesn't have to be an uncle. It could be his father, mother, brother, cousin, mentor, best friend, anybody really. All that matters is, he lost someone important to him, and he at first blames the goddess of fate for it. And I think that's a very human reaction to something like that. However, she makes it clear that her job is to help people grow and change over time, not make everyone happy and comfortable 24-7. They're called growing pains for a reason. What people do with that pain is up to them. Well, all right then. Solid groundwork for some character development, as well as a good moral. Pretty deep, but I mean, I guess that's inevitable when you involve a character whose whole role revolves around fate. Actually, 
Whoa, whoa, hold on, wait a minute, hold up. Wait a second. But is she actually responsible for the death of this guy's Uncle Ben? Again, Uncle Ben in quotation marks. Well, I'd prefer if maybe it's not that she causes bad things to happen, but that she tries to use what she's given to try and weave the story in a good direction. But then again, maybe leave that up for debate and interpretation. I mean, remember how I said earlier that the story of Ariantod can look like two different things depending on how you look at it? Maybe the question of Uncle Ben's murder could also be a matter of debate. Let it encourage discussion. Questions are a good thing for an audience to be asking, provided they're asking the right questions. Speaking of questions, I have one. Where are we in the drawing right now? Oh. oh. Looking good so far. But this is where mistakes started happening. It's not apparent at first, but it occurred to me about halfway through that this would not be enough space to keep the title at the top of the page and keep the clock in frame. So I adjusted the canvas off screen. I had to extend some of the lines to make them not look weird, and I think I managed to get away with most of it. I'll admit, I'm not the best when it comes to shading, but the coloring part is really when a drawing starts coming to life for me. And not to toot my own horn, but I did get a little giddy once I saw this silver spider with all his flat colors laid down. And I just had this moment of, oh yeah, I'm onto something, when I decided to give his eyes a little glow. However, I was a little worried when I started applying the background colors. I kept thinking, uh-oh, are these colors going to work together? Am I going to have to find a new color scheme? Thankfully, my worries were laid to rest by the time I finished putting the flat colors down. Whew, crisis averted. Speaking of backgrounds, it's something I'm trying to get better at, particularly for some upcoming comics projects. I've done some research on background design, and it seems that a lot of the same rules in character design apply to background design as well. Like, what does the look of the environment, or the things within the environment, say about who the character is or how they feel right now? I mean, take this piece for example. Would you have guessed this character's connection to fate and time if I didn't tell you? Maybe not. I mean, the symbol on his hand, the style of the spider on his chest, and the Celtic-ish looking cloak might have given off a mystical connection at first, but the connection to fate and time is made all the more clear with that clock in the frame. Not to mention that the clock itself is emitting a light green glow, which keeps in with a Spider-Man design tradition that green is the color of evil or danger in Spidey comics. Again, a nice touch that I wasn't thinking about when I made it. And then finally, to finish it off with a Marvel comic cover feel, I added a Marvel logo with a number one under it. I also downloaded a font for the actual title itself. Crown Title is the name of the font for those who are curious. It's free and easy to find, just type it into Google if you want to find it. You'll find it very quickly. I added my own name down at the bottom of the page. And... That was it. I made a few minor adjustments off screen, but that's basically it. There he is. The Silver Spider. I am re <laughs> This turned out a lot cooler than I originally thought it would. This was fun. I had fun today. Enough said, folks. That does it for this character design challenge. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and leave a comment down below. And feel free to share this with your nerdy friends. Or your not nerdy friends. I won't judge. And if you want to see more from me in the future, why not subscribe to stay up to date with all of my creative endeavors. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, stay marvelous. The spider soda trend... It sounds like I'm saying spider soda. Which, hey, you know, maybe that's something Sony should invest in, spider soda. Then again, if you shouldn't invest in a spider-themed restaurant, you know.